In this video, we're going to learn about making directories and files, looking at them and deleting them. So I'm here in my NX window and I'll start a terminal. I right clicked on the desktop and just started a terminal here. Here's my terminal. And if you um, saw the last video and if you're at the University of Edinburgh, you might have a link to your data store storage. Um, folders so I can just CD into that and I use tab to autocomplete. So here's my data store. Um, I'm going to start building s uh, some directories within my courses folder. So let's change to courses. If I hit C and tab, it doesn't actually do anything because there's three things here, three directories, coastal model, courses, crunch binary that all start with C. So I'm going to have to give it a bit more information. CO doesn't quite get there, but if COU and I can autocomplete. So now I'm in courses. I can look what's in courses by typing LS. There's nothing in courses. So what I first want to do, let's make a directory for uh, this course, the numeracy modeling and data management. So I'm going to use the command make dir mkdir and I'll make a numeracy modeling and data management folder. So I'm going to highlight I had a folder named something like that with the videos on the end um, down here or in the in the in my root data store directory. So I'll just highlight that and hit the middle button. On my mouse it's the scroll the rolling button but you can Press it and it middle button copies in Linux so I can make that directory. And if, now if I ls, I can see that directory. Um, if I want to get more information, I can do ls uh, dash l and you can see a bit more information. Um, in ls dash, dash l, you can see stuff. So smud, I'm the owner. Um, and then these are permissions here. So uh, I am allowed to read, write, and execute this thing. Um, and D in front means it's a directory, and it tells me when I made it. Okay, if I just don't want all that information, I can just type ls. So let's go into numeracy modeling and data management folder. And again, there's nothing in here. So there's, we'll probably want to have some directory structure in here. I've been making videos, so why don't I make a video folder? can do make dir videos. Okay, so now I've got this video uh, or this folder in here. So far so good. Why don't I make another directory called notes? Oops, misspelled that. So again, I just pressed up to recall the previous command. You can scroll through your command history like that. So I've misspelled that. Again, I could just tap back to the beginning of the folder, but you'll find um, your work will speed up if you use Control A, which brings you to the beginning, or Control E, which brings you to the end of the line. So I can change that to make your notes. So now I've got a notes folder. Let's go in here, change directory into notes. So there's nothing in here, um, but why don't we make a little file? So you can make files in lots of different ways. In Windows, you can um, make text files and things with little programs such as Notepad. Um, if you made something using, say, Microsoft Word, that file format is binary, so you can't actually just open it and read it in what we call a text editor. But other file formats will give you um, what's called ASCII text, so you can just sort of, it's not ones and zeros, it's actual letters and things. So in Linux, uh, if you want to make a file, there's various ways to do it. Um, in On our system, we have lots of different text editors installed. So there's text editors have a varying degree of sort of difficulty and mimicry to things like Word. Um, nothing looks exactly like Word, really, but um, some of them are quite stripped down. So one of these that's rather stripped down is one called um, Vim, which I sometimes use. So I can make a file here. Let's just call it um, 
test.txt. So this has made a new file. Um, this isn't a Vim lesson, so I'm just going to type something into this file. Uh, in Vim, you need to hit I to insert, and I'll type something. This is a text file. Wow. Okay, in Vim, I have to hit escape, the uh, colon, and WQ to write it. Uh, so WQ stands for right quick. So Vim is not necessarily for the faint of heart. If you want something a little bit more user friendly, there's a text editor called Emacs. And that brings up something that looks quite a bit like a sort of traditional, well, it looks a little bit more user friendly here. So you can, um, actually, I'm going to close this. So if I close that, go away. So if I Emacs a new file, test2.txt, it will open a blank file, and then I can type things into it. This is a So that's a different file in Emacs, and I can I have my familiar menu bars and things, and I can also open the other file. So there was the original one, um, and you can switch between the files by going to buffers. So I'm, I can switch between buffers. So anyway, those have been saved. I can shut that down, and now if I type ls, I can see these two files. So let's say you have a bit of some files in a directory and you actually want to look at their contents. Um, if you want to look at their contents without the risk of editing them, one common thing to use is a little program called less. So I did autocomplete there for test, but I want test.txt, not test2. So if I do test or less test.txt, I can just look at this. Um, if you want to get out of less, you just hit Q. That was Q. I can do the same thing with test2. And here's test2. Um, another thing you can do frequently in Linux is you can look for files that have specific um, strings in them or, or sequences of characters. So actually let's make a new file and we'll just call it hello something. So what comes after the dot in these files is called the file extension and by convention you name certain files certain things. So you frequently have PDF files say and that will have an extension of dot PDF. It's a way for programs to tell what files are compatible with that program, but there's no hard and fast rule for what a file should look like. So I could make a text file with the extension .pdf, and it would it would not be available to open to Adobe Reader. Um, you could just make a text file. So the extensions don't don't force a format, but by convention you want to try and have extensions that are familiar. So text files are frequently .txt. But here I'm making something with a totally different extension, hello.something. So I'll bring this up, I'll just type. Okay, so I'm just going to save this and get rid of that. So now I've got three files, two with an extension .txt, two with the word test in it, and one with the word hello and .something in it. Um, I can look for specific files by using the star symbol. So it's a kind of pattern matching. Um, it's a symbol that's used for pattern matching in Linux. So if I type ls star txt, it will give me all the files that have txt in it. Um, I could also do ls test star, so 
So basically the star can replace anything else in the file. Now if I look for just test, it doesn't come up with anything. You need that, you need that star symbol. Or I can look for anything with a dot in it. So now I have a star before because anything can go before the dot and a star afterwards because anything can go after it or an asterisk, I should call it an asterisk. So all of these files have stars or, or dots in them. Okay, now I'm not going to do anything with these files, so let's just get rid of them. To remove a file, you type rm and then the file name. So I just type h and then tab to complete that. And now that file is gone. So I can rm. You can also use the that asterisk to remove everything in here. So let's remove everything that ends with .txt. So now I've um, removed all those things. What about with folders? Well, folders are a little bit different. In a folder, you can only remove the folder if it's empty. So let's make a file. I'll just show you that that's true. So I'll make my vim file. OK, so now we have test in here. So if I go down. I can see what folders I have. Now remember, there was that file in notes. Um, oh, when I went down a directory by using the cd dot dot. So if I try to remove notes, the directory notes, so first of all, you don't rm directories, you rm dir directories, remove directory. And now I try to remove notes. And you can't do it. It tells you directory is not empty. So you'll need to go into notes you can remove the file. So you can also um, just hit remove rm asterisk. That removes everything in this folder. Be very careful using rm asterisk. One of the reasons why remove directory will not work on an empty directory is because sometimes people might say rm dir the wrong directory and delete a bunch of stuff that they wanted to keep. So just be very cautious when using this. There's no recovery of these files. Now I can get out of notes and I can see, so notes is there, I can rmdir notes and now that directory is gone.